we're going to talk about the 70 millimeter camera system. The other day we talked about the 35 and we talked about how that is primarily designed for in-cabin flash photography. Occasionally we'll shoot things out the windows or EVA with the 35, but the 70 is designed uh, primarily for taking photographs out the windows. And it's a wonderful camera system. We're going to talk about the displays and controls first, and uh, then we'll talk about its operation, and then we'll talk about the spot meter, which is the, the way that we determine exposures, because this is a purely manual camera. There's nothing automatic about it, except for the fact that it has the motor drive that advances the film automatically. Let's start with the uh, displays and controls on the very front of the camera. <coughs> The uh, button right here is the shutter, I'm sorry, the uh, lens release button. And this has to be depressed in order to remove a lens. When we're putting a lens back on, though, we want to make sure that we don't depress this button. We want to be able to hear and feel the click to make sure that, it is, uh, that the lens is installed all the way. The shutter release push button is right here. It's an oversized button. This was a, a NASA suggestion so that uh, when the guys were wearing gloves, if this was to be used outdoors, um, then their large size glove finger could depress their button. On the uh, right side of the camera body is the mode selector switch. Let me back up a second. If it okay. isn't in that position. If it's not in that position, okay. then the camera has not finished a full cycle. And we refer to the malfunction procedures. It means that either the batteries have died or there is a jam in the magazine that's not allowing the, the film to advance and therefore is jamming and not letting the camera finish its full cycle. Turn the module on when you first install a magazine and don't turn it off until after the whole thing has been shot. Of course, if you have a problem with the mag, you're going to take it off and certainly you turn off the data mag, data module, and you note this is a bad magazine. If you have a problem where you do get a red light for some reason, go ahead and take this module off and take a module off of another magazine that you've already exposed and trade out modules. And even though the frame number, magazine number will be wrong, the GMT will still be correct. Should you turn that off? You should leave it on as you, when you transfer it. Uh, the magazine on. That that won't make any difference. I won't. Okay. No. You can transfer it. You can turn it off anytime. Uh -huh. okay. But our concern is is that if you turn it off, you forget to turn it back on. Yeah, you may forget to turn it back on. Those. Okay. And you can bring it up. And I recommend using the latch back here in the bag rather than putting additional wear and tear on the camera by forcing it up there like that. Okay. And then I'll wiggle it and make sure that it's on. This way, it just seems a little more kind of. Okay. And then when you're ready to shoot, you make sure that you pull the dark slide. Now you cannot get the magazine off because the lens or the dark slide is not installed. The dark slide fits into the it's a very narrow slit. You can install the dark slide either way.
checklists and cue cards and that kind of thing. And there are a few new items there too. Uh, and we'll just start here on the mid deck. Um, pretty much everything's the same uh, in terms of the airlock and the lockers and the floor compartments. The uh, right now there's a MAR mid deck accommodations rack unit uh, there where the galley is normally. And this is still under development, and I, you know, there's not going to be one on your flight. You'll have a gallon there. The, uh, the hatch over there, uh, MS3 no longer sits by the side hatch. There's a couple things that are different up on the flight deck that we'll look at when we get up there. Anything different in stowage? No. Um, the, the locker trays and all that kind of thing works the same way. The, uh, the, the floor compartments are all the same. Um, the only thing that's going to change is where your where your seats and treadmill are attached. Um, we don't have as much volume over here as to use as it looks like because the sleep station is running. Uh, stowage is still going to be cramped in terms of stowage space for a seven-man crew for a week. It's, it's going to be uh, you know, tight. And you got suits now. And you got and, and so that makes it even worse. Although it looks like we might have a trash container. No kidding. <laughs> new DTO. Okay. And there's a new, uh, we'll, we'll see this tomorrow, but there's a new type of uh, beverage container that goes along with that trash compactor. The old ones won't, wouldn't compact. And uh, this new one will. And that square one too? Not the soft bag. Oh. Well, the, the square ones will still be on board, but, yeah. but uh, they're starting to fly a mix of these new ones and, and the old ones. And the new ones are compactable. We'll talk about the flight data file now, and we're going to start off with the mid deck stuff, which is uh, the beginning. Um, and I need to add a, a sheet to this um, that you'll need procedure, procedure wise. But there's also a few little extras that are considered flight data file, are managed by the flight data file people, and, and they're considered the flight data file. And that's things like the uh, pens and writing instruments and, and uh, book clamps, um, the tethers that will restrain the books in place. Uh, those things are all considered part of the flight data file. Now this is, uh, this is something you'll probably recognize. Um, it's a little orbit map. And they still fly this, although it's, use it's losing its utility because of the spot that uh, shows you a, a display that includes this and a lot more. So uh, this is still on the inventory, though. There's a, uh, a mid-deck cue cards kit. Now, your second, your first page of your handout uh, gives you a list of what kinds of things are typically found in, uh, in the mid-deck uh, flight data file. The, uh, the mid-deck cue cards, these are things for the mid-deck uh, systems, like you'd expect. There's a tags card. Several cards for uh, medical medical DSOs. There's blood velocity. And, uh, Is there anything in here? Do one of those. There you go. Electrodes. Too many decaps. Sam will do all those. <laughs> <laughs> There's a teleprinter card. Never need that. Yeah, I hope we don't need that. still give positions where you put them. Galley card. Um, yeah, these are pretty much just reference it as you need to and stick it where you need to. Yeah, the um, flight data file accessories bag. And it's not full, but because there would be a bunch of marking pins in here too, but these are book clamps. There's a couple different sizes of book clamps uh, to hold the uh, Hold the book open to a certain page and you can stick it to the locker Those face. Are Those are new, yeah. yeah. Different than the ones we use. Well, we can, show, we can, I can show you how they work. Oh. That allows for larger yeah. books. I think they have some of these at Marshall now. Okay. Yeah, I should get some. Yeah, yeah really. I think they do. That looks much better. So, uh, in zero G, this works fine. Yeah. Even, you can even, even do it with the 
two pages. Hold two pages open. Mm -hmm. that, that'll, that would work in zero G. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or, or, or like this. The other items in the locker here, of course, are your payload payload checklist. I've got it loaded with I, I, a bunch of IUS checklists now, and, and you're you're familiar with with your own payload checklists. There's um, a couple of photo TV checklists, which I'm sure you'll be using for setup photo TV scenes to beam down, and there's also uh, camera information here on the manual cameras and malfunction camera malfunctions things like that go ahead and get in one of the seats up front they're really nice they're no longer do we have those big clunky uh, uh, forward things we still have those for the overhead and aft windows, but the forward windows are uh, just cloth uh, covers that are rolled up mm -hmm. in those containers, and you just unroll them and stick them to the window with Velcro. So there's nothing to put in the window shade uh, and the, the, the EMI shields? The EMI and shields and the aft shades and filters, and those things are all still the same. And the, uh, so that, that bag is still down there. Uh, it's just inner. Oh, roll it out and then it sticks to the window yeah. okay. frame with the velcro and they're, they're nice they've, uh, they've worked real well the, the two forward ones windows three and four are hard to operate just because the hud's in the way and 